conflict. As the world teetered on the brink of anarchy, a new hope arose. An elite international task force charged with ending the war and restoring liberty to all nations. Overwatch. Soldiers, scientists, adventurers, oddities. Guardians who secured global peace for a generation. Under its steadfast protection, the world recovered. And today, though its watch has ended, its soaring ideals of freedom and equality will never be forgotten. Remembered during the Omnic Crisis as the organisation that brought the world back from the brink of destruction. Remembered in peace as an organisation that sanctioned kidnapping, assassination and would become as big a threat to global stability as the Omniums they fought to destroy. To understand the success and downfall of Overwatch, one must examine the circumstances that precipitated their founding. Omnica Corporation and the Omniums in the early years of the 21st century, humanity made great strides in the development of robotics and artificial intelligence. At the forefront of this innovation was the Omnica Corporation, who revolutionised robotic manufacturing by developing and constructing factories marketed as Omniums. These Omniums, built on every continent, housed massive automated construction machines and self-improving software algorithms. However, after multiple Omniums kept breaking down, evidence of fraud was uncovered and it was found that the Omniums would never be able to meet the corporation's promises of growth. It was not long until all Omniums were deactivated and dismantled as Omnica Corporation went under. The Omnic Crisis The world shook when the Omniums reactivated themselves and began producing untold numbers of Omnics such as the Bastion Seagull Automaton E54s the OR-14s and Titans. The Omniums immediately began waging war against all of humanity. Although many nations were prepared for a conflict, none alone, save for Russia, were able to permanently neutralise a single Omnium. However, it was quickly discovered that certain individuals and strategies showed remarkable ingenuity in dealing with this Omnic threat. Under the auspices of the United Nations, a small team was brought together in secret with the purpose of striking significant blows against the Omnic War Machine. They were Jack Morrison, Gabriel Reyes, Anna Amari, Liao, Reinhard Wilhelm and Torbjorn Lindholm. By targeting the Omnic's command and control protocols, they were eventually able to render the Omnic armies inert following a campaign of secretive missions and raids. Their victory marked the end of the Omnic Crisis and the beginning of Overwatch's Golden Age. Overwatch In the decades following the Omnic Crisis, Overwatch continued to grow, their mission now one of global stability and peace. Overwatch was deployed against problems ranging from rogue Omnics and warmongering dictators to rescue operations and rebuilding initiatives following natural disasters. Overwatch pioneered research to eliminate epidemics, undo ecological damage and to revolutionise medical care. For an entire generation, they became a symbol of hope and embodied the very best of humanity. The Fall Dissatisfaction with Overwatch had existed since the end of the Omnic Crisis, some being critical of the organisation's scope, resources and power and called for greater oversight and restrictions. Rumours existed of Black Ops missions carrying out assassinations and kidnappings, but these were generally dismissed by the public of the day. As Overwatch undertook increasingly controversial missions and rumours of its Black Ops division continued to grow, public opinion turned against them. After a string of controversial missions, a number of once celebrated agents were forced to retire in disgrace. However, this did not mark the end of the organisation's troubles. Towards the end of Overwatch's vigil, the existence of the long-rumoured Black Ops division was confirmed and revealed as being called Black Watch. Stories circulated of assassination, coercion, kidnapping, torture and far worse. Before long, the governments of the world called on the United Nations to shut down the aggressive and repeated violations of many countries' sovereignty. With distrust at an all-time high, 
and the governments of the world regarding Overwatch with ever greater suspicion and disdain, a massive explosion destroyed Overwatch's headquarters in Switzerland. Passed off by the United Nations at the time as an accident, it was later revealed to have been the result of a battle between Overwatch Commander Jack Morrison and Blackwatch Commander Gabriel Reyes. In the wake of the explosion, the full scale of Blackwatch's transgressions and crimes became known, causing the last supporters and defenders of Overwatch to join calls for its dissolution. Overwatch's charter was revoked with the introduction of the Petrus Act, and the organisation disbanded. Olympia Shaw of Atlas News poignantly observes, The world had never been more peaceful. The biggest threat to global stability and growth was, in many minds, Overwatch itself. Its time had passed. The present day. Across the world, local political leaders have been accusing corporations of persuading them into exploitative deals, with mercenaries being hired in some cases to enact more permanent solutions. In spite of greater Omnic civil rights movements, tensions between humans and Omnics remains high. The assassination of Takata Mondata, former spiritual leader of the Shambhali, and the attempted theft of Doomfist Gauntlet show continued activity by the agents of Talon. In Russia, the second Omnic crisis has already claimed over 15,000 lives. In the absence of Overwatch, clandestine organisations are operating with impunity, with the toll of dead civilians in their wake only rising. Most recently, agents of Talon, led by Reaper, attempted to steal the Overwatch agent database during an attack on the decommissioned Overwatch outpost, Watchpoint Gibraltar. Thanks to the heroic actions of Winston, the former notable scientist of Overwatch, who had been in seclusion at the Watchpoint, the attack was thwarted and the database secured. This brazen move by Talon cemented Winston's belief the world once again needed the men and women of Overwatch, and so he has initiated the Overwatch recall protocol. Only time will tell which former agents of Overwatch answer the call. What is certain is that there is a new generation of remarkable individuals from around the world who might prove to be the newest generation of Overwatch agents. From a local musician in Brazil who saved his favela from exploitation, to a professional gamer turned mech pilot from Korea and her colleagues fighting tooth and nail to defend their homes. These are the heroes of the young people of today, and are exactly the types of people Overwatch needs if it is to rebuild and once more serve and protect the world. After all, Someone has to do something! We have to do something! We can make a difference again. The world needs us now, more than ever. Are you with me? So, there you have it folks, my first Overwatch lore video. I really hope that it was informative and that it gave you a bit more context about Overwatch as an organisation. So that you may be a little bit more aware of where they're at, where we get to meet them in the game. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would like me to focus on next, uh, what hero you'd like me to cover, that'd be really, really great. Thank you for putting up with the quality of the editing. It's actually really hard and it's really time consuming and I clearly had no idea. So I'm gonna have to do uh, a lot of work on these video editing skills, but I've already learned a lot. So the quality, I promise you, will improve as I make more videos. Uh, so that's everything for now. If you enjoyed the video, then please do uh, like and subscribe and share it. And uh, I will see you, hopefully, very, very soon back here at Watchpoint Oak. So remember, guys, dig deep, reach high, and grow a little every day. And thanks again for watching.